Hello BookTube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm, lovely to see you, hope you're well, hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you are, whatever it is you're doing, I hope you're having a jolly day doing it, and it's a grand old day. Um, a BookTube cat for today is Indy, but I won't show you him, because he's just having a wash. Keeping himself tidy, we'll just draw a veil over that. But he's, he's, I like to have a cat with me. <laughs> I normally have a cat with me wherever I am in the house. There's normally a cat that I could reach over and stroke. And at the moment we've got Indy, although I'm not going to stroke him while he's doing that. Uh, so hello, how are you? Are you having a good week? Uh, yes, it's Friday Reads. It's Friday Reads. It's Friday Reads. I'm here on a Friday. It's Friday Reads. Hello. Hello, BookTube. So this is Friday Reads. This is my weekly video where I talk about the books that I have read in the past week the books I'm currently reading and if I have any reading plans for the upcoming week. Um, oh, there he is. There he is. There's the ears. Are you going to curl back down? We're going to carry on cleaning. Okay. I was going to show you him, but we'll keep, we'll keep it. Keep that private, shall we? And, um, yes. So this is Friday Reads. How are you? Are you having a good week? Are you having a good week? This has been a medium week for me. Um, nothing not bad in any way. Not spectacular in any other way. I had a very nice weekend. What did we do at the weekend? Oh, we did. We went away. So on Saturday, we went to the Lido, which is Jesus Green Lido in Cambridge, which is my happy place. We went there and I've been a couple of times this week already. And so that, that's been gorgeous. And then on Sunday, the husband uh, read about uh, the, the, a play on at London in London at the moment called The Play That Went Wrong and he managed to get three tickets for us to see it on the Sunday matinee and we went to see it and it was hilarious and we had really good trains down there and I took a kind of sandwich <laughs> sandwich lunch uh, which we sat and ate and then we went and we, the three of us just laughed so it was myself my husband and our 11 year old son Benedict we went and we saw it and we belly laughed for two and a half hours two hours it's two hours long that's right it's not hugely long I don't think it could be hugely long a for the physicalness of the performers and b because you just can't laugh for that length of time um i'm not a huge fan of farce i love comedy but i don't particularly love farce and the reason i don't love farce is that it's incredibly hard to do it well it's very easy to do it badly and i think the majority of things that are out as farce at the moment especially comedy of manners are not particularly done well. Um, I love pantomime and the uh, all the conventions of pantomime. I love that. So I like slapstick, which, you know, is in pantomime. But it, for it to be done well, the timing is so crucial. And I have to say, this was superb from before it starts until it finishes and it was just brilliant so if you have a chance and you live in uh, the UK and you have a chance to go and see it because I know they tour as well then I highly recommend it I can't remember it Mischief, Mischief Theatre Company I think it is they were just brilliant so that was really unexpected and it was lovely so that was excellent so that was I mean what a gift is that and I had a really lovely day if you follow me on Instagram um, you'll know that I had a really lovely day when I went to the uh, went to the Lido and I did lots of swimming because that's just that's just gorgeous um, and it was sunny unlike today where it's raining uh, and it was sunny and I sat there and my head got wet because I'm having problems with my my um, swimming hat keeping all of this under the swimming hat is difficult and so I was kind of drying it and sat there in the sun and see this is what I mean the week has given beautiful day at the Lido, taken away because I then moved my hair and realised that all the damp ends had been over one boob and so it looked like I'd leaked. So I had just this round wet patch surrounding my boob. I was like, I look like I leaked. I look like I'm breastfeeding and I've, I've expressed myself. I was like, oh, that's good. I was going to go to the supermarket. That's good. I've got to walk to the car. We're just, and you know when you sat there thinking, is there any way I can get out of this? <laughs> is there any way? But luckily I found out I had a cardigan. In fact, I had this cardigan in the back. So I was able to go out. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. 
<laughs> that was that kind of day. Um, oh, yeah, and then another thing. As I got into the car, stumbled into the car, you know, as you do, because you kind of imagine yourself slipping in elegantly. No, I stumbled into the car. I managed to flick my car keys, and they did this perfect arc up and then down by the side of the seat and the gears. And... A good ten minutes trying to pick them out. They were they were reachable, but I it was kind of taking all the skin off my knuckles. That's how it felt. You know that. You know that thing. And it was like, well, what if I'd done it a hundred times? I couldn't have done it in such a way. It was just I don't know how I did it. I just kind of flicked them, and they went like that. We, you know, and you can see it happening, and you go, no, and that was it. They were complete. Uh, yeah. I'm going to have thinking. And the weird thing is, I have done it before. <laughs> so I'm like, what is it I do when I get in the car? Anyway. Just sharing that with you. Sharing my week with you. So it's been good. Play that went wrong. Bad. Looked like I'd expressed myself. So yes, anybody that has breastfed or has lived with somebody who has breastfeeding, who was breastfeeding, will know that that's what happens sometimes. However much you wear those pads, uh, sometimes it shifts and suddenly you've got a very wet top. And that's what I had. But it wasn't. My hair. Curse you, hair. Curse you. Um, yes, did you see my other video that I have put up this week? So, yes, let's get to, let's get straight onto the books. I'm not going to do anything else. Oh, I will, I will show you. I am going to show you these because I'm so super pleased with these. These are my new bookmarks. For those that don't know, I have an Etsy shop, which I shall leave the link down below, um, where I sell bookmarks that I... Uh, uh, that I cross stitch and this is my new design this is Friday Reads because it's Friday Reads it's Friday Reads it's Friday Reads I'm here on a Friday it's Friday Reads so here we are I have done four I've done the same it's the same design but in four different colours it will have a um a hole there with a ribbon on the end, I just haven't put, haven't done that. So that's Friday reads. So I have four different colours. Oh, I love this. This deep purple, deep purple, and I also have this kind of nineteen thirties, nineteen twenties, thirties green. So I have four colours. I have burgundy, I have gold, and I have 1930s green. So I love these colours. These are my kind of colours that I would automatically gravitate towards. I don't particularly wear them, especially not gold, apart from my rings, um, but I do love them. I absolutely love them. These to me are very evocative for that type of that time. 1920s and 30s which is when I read I love reading about that time so I think that's why I'm drawn to these colours so yes yeah, so there we are so I've got some new designs so some new colours have gone into the shop so if you're interested in buying one of these that would be lovely so yes they're in, they're in the shop so that's good to do that but I'm going to go straight on to the books because I've got lots of books to talk about I've got right here and right there um so yeah so I put up a new video this week and it was a try a chapter and I have never done that before where you go and you just read a chapter of the book my word it is really is raining sorry that was a bit of a segue but really is raining now it's been raining all of the afternoon but it really is raining now no laundry um yes so I um I, t I thought I'd give that a go. I'll try a chapter uh, because I did an unhaul the week before and then I had a stack of books and I was very tempted to get rid of these um, because I just have lost enthusiasm. All of them I've had for like three, four, five, if not longer years and I've never read them. I've kept looking over them to the new and the shiny books that have been coming in. And then even when I've been reading backlist, when I've deliberately gone to sh my shelves to, to shop from my shelves rather than buy new ones or go to a library I just I just couldn't you know I just didn't read them and I don't know I did I don't know what it was I just lost my enthusiasm for these books so I had six books and I tried a chapter of each now I'm not somebody that normally does that because I normally if I start a book I finish it or I put it down and the likelihood is I'm not going to go back to it I'm not somebody that chops and changes however I thought I'd give them a go and I'd do it as a as a little a vlog. And the book that I, out of those six, which really surprised me actually, the two, the top two were The Left Hand of God by Paul Hoffman. 
which is a, a fantasy read and yeah a tale for the time being by Ruth Ezeki so these were the top two books and I have read them so I started reading this one straight away and I was about halfway through it if not about, I can't remember exactly how far, but I wasn't. I was quite far away through it last Friday, and I was like, um, was it, I can "See, there's a bit of hair comes stuck out." There we are. Um, and I was gonna. I would. So normally last week I would have spoken about it, but I didn't want to tell you about it because then it kind of gave away the whole of the the end of the suspense filled video. It wasn't really suspense filled, was it? So I read this. It's Paul Hoffman, which is a fantasy book. You can tell that. It's a bloke in a cloak with a sword. So there we go. And I tried it and I would have carried on reading it right then and there. And in fact, that evening I got a goodly way through it because I was enjoying it so much. So his name is Kale. They told him he could destroy the world. Maybe he will. So it's... Uh, it doesn't actually, the world being, building is such that you don't actually kind of get an idea of the world. You get an idea of the locations where they were. So it starts off with Kale is one boy in held in the sanctuary, which is this kind of monastic um, institution where they teach the boys, all boys, um, they keep them in dire circumstances, in dire kind of torture-filled, horrific circumstances, and they teach them to fight and uh, be warriors. But they're also seen as kind of cannon fodder against this constant war against the... I can't remember what they're called, the other people. So they are the redeemers, and they're the atheists, I think. So they're against the atheists. So they're the redeemers. They believe in a god, very, very vengeful god, and then, and then what have you. And stuff ensues. So it starts off with Kale being fourteen, and the whole of this book is actually. I thought. I thought it was going to be him as a young man. It was going to be him as a young lad, and then going to an adult. But it doesn't. It remains at that. So. I was really excited about the book and I really wanted to read it and I was really let down. <laughs> I know, I so wanted to like it. I really liked it to begin with. I liked the kind of setup of it and I thought it it didn't go anywhere. Oh, I, do you know, it, I, I'm even a muddle in myself. It's a muddle of a book. It's a muddle. It's, it's, I don't think it knew exactly what it wanted to be. I'm sure the second and third books probably are better. Oh, I don't know. It, it wasn't sure exactly what it wanted to be, whether it was... There were so many descriptions. I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you one thing. I really didn't like about it. Sorry, the cat's just leaned over and gone. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, it was violence soaked. It re reveled in the violence. And you know, do you remember those films like? Um, oh, I can't. I don't. I, ne I never watched them. But they were classed as kind of torture porn. So they were kind of. The, the, they were they were horror films, but it was just all about people being tortured and, and nastiness. I, Human Caterpillar, I think, was one of them. Horrific, not my kind of thing to watch. And if I'd known it was like this, I wouldn't have read it. The violence in here is unremitting and it is unrelenting and it just... It just he revels in it. The I get the feeling the author really enjoyed imagining all the violence and all the discipline which was just an excuse to be violent against the the boys in the sanctuary and the nastiness of it and and how unpleasant it was and how much one person could stand and and kind of the fight scenes were endless and I just I felt like he just reveled in that and I tell you what I got fed up about I got fed up with this it does seem to be happening that when we think of fantasy, so I'm going to go and read some fantasy, it's 
blokes with swords killing and maiming and being warrior with other blokes with swords. We seem to think that fantasy has to have so much violence in it. There is a, it is, it's like, well, it's a fantasy book. So therefore it has to have violence and, and men being vile to one another and to, to women. And it just, Oh, I really didn't like it for that. It's not serious. So in the Game of Game of Thrones, in those books, the violence is quite serious violence. Whereas this, I mean, it is serious, but it's kind of so continuous. It's kind of so overwhelming. There's wave after wave after wave of it. I kind of get the feeling it's like kind of like, well, you kind of get almost immune to it in some ways but it was all it, it, I kind of was going why are you doing this and I wanted something more than it I wanted the idea behind it was very good he didn't need all of that and he seemed to kind of get lost in all of that and the kind of the threads of the other the actual threads of the story of what was going to happen and what could possibly happen and the kind of military campaigns and um, the the kind of switching of fortunes or the surprise elements in the books, they could have been really interesting, but it was so washed over with this, this sea of violence and this the tone was continuous throughout. There wasn't a variety of of tone the female characters three thousands of men three women if that um really they were just nothing they were just nothing and that's not to say every book has to be 50 50 or or but it's not to my taste i really I really, I really was disappointed because I enjoyed the beginning so much and I think that my expectations were up here because I really liked it and then it was right down there. <laughs> it was up here and it was right down there. So that's the other thing. The other thing it did was the thing that I really loathe in books. It foreshadowed. I hate foreshadowing. I think it's really, it's one of those common little uh, techniques that are used and I think they are, it's used too much and it's not clever. I don't find foreshadowing clever. So what I mean by foreshadowing is where they break the story to say, well, if he'd known that this was his last enjoyable day, he'd have acted differently. So basically it's saying it's going to get grim. Or if he'd known that this would be the last time he saw her, or if he knew that this was going to be the last nice meal, or if he knew that his luck was about to change, you know, and then what it does is it breaks the momentum and it and it stops, it breaks down the fourth wall, it breaks it, and it, every time it does it, it takes me out of the story with a solid thwunk, and I don't enjoy that either, I don't like that. Now, there can be reasons as to why you would do this, and I was talking about it with the husband, we were talking about, um, in theatrical terms, how somebody, the, the, um, a, a, a theatre production or a, on you know if you're watching something on the telly they do it by addressing the audience they can they break the fourth wall by knowing look to camera or um talking directly to the audience in the theatre so uh, on the theatrical piece on on Sunday that's one or two of the characters well quite a few of the characters broke the fourth wall but they broke it continuously there was a reason why they did it there was an absolute concrete reason why they did it and the reason why they didn't didn't change it was absolutely held and so in that world it was perfect what they did and watching something like Gentleman Jack if you've seen that on BBC at the moment, which is on Sunday nights, we are loving that. So it's a BBC programme. I think it is available. Well, I don't know how available it is. I think I have seen that it's, it's on in America as well. But it's on in, in the UK on BBC, Sunday night. BBC One, Sunday night, nine o'clock. Love it. Um, the, the main character, Anne Lister, breaks fourth wall by looking at the camera. And I was talking to the husband about why does it work, considering how easy it is to over, overdo it. Why does it do that? Why is it? Why is that breaking of the the kind of the this is just a story that you're an observer, but actually bringing them in? It's because you 
she's doing it to bring it in for comedy reasons but it's also so it's from her it's my story and I'm sharing it with you and it's so subtly done and it's so well done the foreshadowing in here was appalling it, every time I was like dunk straight out of the story and I was like why why are you doing it and as a technique I really loathe it and I think it makes me cross can you tell <laughs> so yeah so that was that so I really hope the book's going to be like up there and it was down there and I was disappointed and I won't be continuing with the series however if you enjoyed it and I, I if you enjoyed it that's grand and and it really annoyed me that I'd thought oh I was in a real fantasy mood and I was thinking why 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 do we think of fantasy why does fantasy have to be men with swords killing each other why could, fantasy is so much broader than that and it seems that what we kind of say is fantasy is really kind of narrow and 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 annoying <laughs> so yes so um i also read this but first i'm going to talk about a, a little palette cleanser two little pal palette cleansers uh that i use this week yes i know i haven't read any trashy mills and boon for ages and i went to the library because i was killing out killing some time in the uh town that we were in because benedict and his friend were moseying around when lads about town for an hour and I did what I needed to do and so in the end I went to the library and had a browse ended up picking up these two books so I first read that one Sarah Craven's Count Valeria's Prisoner and then I read later on in the week Rachel Bailey's Countering His Claim these are both modern Mills and Boons short yes that's one of the benefits of a Mills and Boon short um, they were rubbish, lordy. I haven't read a Mills and Boon in ages, and I wonder whether I had high hopes. And I, they were, <laughs> oh, oh my word! Now I actually picked this one up, but not because of the cover, because she doesn't look like that, and he doesn't look like that. It's like they've got two random people, at, uh, you know, are out having a night, and they've said, "We stand." And they've gone, Ooh. and then taking a picture because they're nothing, look nothing like that. I mean, nothing like that in the book. Um, count. Yes, it's just rubbish. But she, Sarah Craven, is a very well-known Mills and Booms author. And I have read some of hers in the past and enjoyed them. This one, lordy. She, I, think, I reckon she just phoned it in. I reckon she didn't even bother typing it. It was just, I mean, the plot. I mean, not that we ever say with Mills and Boom, hmm, realistic. <laughs> That's not why you reach for a Mills and Boom. You don't reach for the kind of gritty realism. You know, what it's like on the hard street. No, no, you want escapist romantic nonsense. But this was just, just, it was terrible. It was, I mean, it was, it was terrible. It was bad. It was bad. I read it in the evening going, oh, oh God, oh, oh, terrible. Um, and then I read later on in the week, I read Rachel Bailey's Countering His Claim. Now, I haven't read any Rachel Bailey's before. I don't believe have I read any Rachel Bailey's before. Not that I've got to remember any of the titles of them. I never can. It's a Mills of Moon. Um... Did he look like that? No. No, she was... No, he didn't look like that. She... Oh, she may have looked a bit like that. This was actually better than that one, but it was still rubbish. If you can hear Benedict in the background, he's playing on his game, and he plays on his game with his headphones, talking to his friends. So if you can hear bellows and screams, that's what's happening out there. We we'll get kind of used to it now. Um, that was... Yes. It, yes. Uh, it was better. Set on a cruise ship. Um, yeah, still rubbish, but it was better rubbish. <laughs> ridiculous, yes, but kind of better ridiculous. So it was still bobbins, but I, I did enjoy it. So I enjoyed that one. That one I just didn't enjoy. But yeah, so, okay. Then I read, this is going to be a long one, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Right, okay. Cannot keep going on like this. Can't keep meeting like this. Let's. Uh, a Tale for the for the Time Being by Ruth Ezeki. So this was the second book that I picked out of Tri Chapter. This was number two. This is a dual perspective. So it's two two people's stories. One within this page is lies the book of the diary of a girl called Now, I have been told, which is N-A-O. Riding the waves of a, of a tsunami, it's making its way across the ocean. Uh, so she is 16 year old uh, schoolgirl in Japan writing her her diary and it's interspersed with the woman who finds it on um, in Desolation Sound in Canada and she is called Ruth 
and she's a no novelist and she's of Japanese descent um so uh so it's two visions really so, so it's two two people that have got Japanese heritage and I loved the Japanese heritage side of this that was brilliant and wonderful and rich and it there was lots of explanations without it feeling like you were being taught it was just part of it so there are loads of words and then you've got the footnotes to kind of explain what they uh, they are but it not lecturing it was just very much part of the story and then once it had been used it explained it would then be used quite happily in the rest of the story so it felt like I was really getting an idea about the cult you know an aspect of the culture from from that so I really liked that. I thought that was really good. Um, it was a tale of two books for me, really. I liked Now's. Her tone changed. And what I really liked at the beginning was it was sassy and sharp and witty and um, clever. And that was the tone of her. She was she was all of these things and it wasn't too earnest and it does get for me it got slightly more earnest as it went along however the story that she's ex explaining in the diary was good and fascinating and I enjoyed it. Ruth on the other hand in Canada I found was the weaker side of the book and I didn't enjoy it as much that's not to say that I I didn't enjoy it, but I was wanting to get back to Nao's story in Japan. I wanted to get back to her and find out what was going to happen to her and her and her father. Uh, that's what I wanted, not not Ruth. Ruth wasn't as um, yeah. Ruth, it is Ruth. I've just said Ruth as in is it Ruth Azeki? Um, I think it is supposed to be like I think you are supposed to kind of Ruth and Ruth Zeki. I think you are supposed to be kind of kind of playing with the idea that she actually did this. I didn't, I didn't love that as much. Um, I didn't love her husband's character as much, and I I think you know, the tone of her was very same-ish and doesn't develop in the way that now's tone did so it's an interesting book from that kind of thing i think it's a book for uh, a book of tale uh, uh, of two halves for me and i definitely preferred one than the other i feel that if you have a dual perspective like that so you have a dual perspective or you have a, a dual story or you have a kind of two time zones or two timelines or that kind of stuff you do run the risk as a novelist of the reader preferring one than the other it's difficult to make both of them as strong, as compelling. Um, I think you always have a dominant storyline and a lesser storyline. Um, and it's how you are willing to, to cope with that. Um, that's just my my little thoughts on that. So that was, that, yeah, I'd be interested to hear what anybody else thinks about this and whether you've read it and you've enjoyed it. And, but it was very interesting and I wouldn't I wouldn't not pick up a Ruth Azeki in the future if I saw one I'd be like oh yes um I'd be interested because I'd be interested to see what she does in the future what she has done in the past which will be my future timey-wimey stuff so yeah there we go I have more things to say on this but this is a long video so what am I reading at the moment I so I read four things two of them rather small yes but I did read four things. So to kind of celebrate the fact I read that, I picked up the latest, my next in the, um, excuse me, Jacqueline Winspear, which is a dangerous place. This is number 11, I think, of the Jacqueline Winspears. I haven't got the next one, actually, which is Road to Munchen. So I do actually, Journey to Munchen, Munich, Munchen. Um, so yes, it's. I've just read the first chapter. It's a little bit, a little bit, of an unusual tone again a bit I wasn't it could be a bit sad um I had a bit of kind of a roller coaster just in that one that one chapter if you've read it you'll know exactly what I mean unfortunately I can't tell you what it is because it's so far down the series if I talk about what's happening in her life it'll be plot spoilers for all the books so I won't tell you what's going on with it um but I did I am enjoying it I do love Jacqueline Winsby can take me a chapter or two to get in so I'm expecting it to take a chapter or two before I'm absolutely hooked um the other book that I am slowly picking up and reading a little bit virtually every day is Wherever You Go There You Are by John Kabat-Zinn 
and uh, this is mindfulness meditation for every day so I'm it's split in very short let's turn that off my lap um, it's split into very short little passages so it's perfect for picking up and reading one or two every day um, and it's just I'm really enjoying enjoying reading that and taking that on board I had been reading this uh, Anam Kara, Spiritual Wisdom from the Celtic World by John Donoghue. But it was a little bit flowery and a little bit poetic for me. It seemed to be relishing its um, flowery and imaginative and emotional thing. And as it's a, little, it's a book that I'm picking up a little bit every day, it was, it's one of those things that I think you'd actually probably have to devote yourself a bit more to it rather than kind of dipping in and out. It's not a dipping in and out book. So I'm going to put that back and go. To, I'd actually read quite a bit of it before I decided that it wasn't working for me. So this is working much better. So I'm enjoying reading that. And lastly, this would probably be something the next book that I read in the next week or so is Six Feet Over Adventures in the Afterlife by Mary Roach. So I treated myself with some birthday voucher, with my birthday voucher, I treated myself to this. So Six Feet Over, Adventures in the Afterlife by Mary Roach. So that is exactly what it sounds like. So it's Mary Roach, um, is a wonderfully dry, funny, trustworthy tour guide into the exciting but murky world of the afterlife. So I shall be reading that and I shall report back. I thought it looks a brilliant cover anyway. So. so those are the three books that I have currently currently setting my eyes on having set my eyes on all of these and I should be using my new bookmarks so yeah so there we go so there we go friends I've had to kind of rush that in the end because I have been wittering on this is a longer one so the, yes this is a longer Friday reads but I had lots to say and get off my chest as you could tell that's the thing though if I read a lot in a week then I end up having to say an awful lot and then I don't do parish notices and what other things because I've got all this to say. So anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. And uh, thank you if you managed to stay to this point. That's brilliant. It's marvellous and very much appreciated. This has been a lovely booktube. Let's do this again. <laughs>